there are many signs from the day of Qiyamah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he actually talks about minor sins, um, I beg your pardon, minor signs, he speaks about minor signs and major signs, some which are very near Qiyamah, some which are a bit more further away from Qiyamah. There are, this is a whole chapter within itself, okay, but I don't want to focus on each and everything, I want to talk about one element particularly and how it can affect us. I had a bayan once about Dajjal, right? So subhanAllah, the night, the, when I had the night before Dajjal, there must have been about 250 people turn up to the bayan. The next day, the, it was a bayan about the importance of giving da'wah. So how we can be proactive in the community. Allah, the customer, 20 people must have been there. 19 or 20, I counted them. 19 or 20 people. <laughs> the Dajjal, mashallah, 250. Because it, it's mysterious, isn't it? It's, like, it's spooky. Like, and now you can relate to the whole spooky thing because of Halloween, right? Pumpkins everywhere. If you know how to make halwa, there won't be no pumpkin wasting after that. They'll scoop it out, make a halwa, and then inshallah, this, carving out faces and chucking, this won't happen. But anyway, bichara, you know, it's up to them. Point I'm mentioning is this. That there are many, many signs, and for when we hear about signs of Qiyamah, when we hear about Dajjal, it's, yeah, I'm going to go for that bayan, Yajuj Majuj. And one youngster said to me, he goes, Malala, when you talk about Yajuj Majuj, send me a message, I'll come for the bayan. I'm like, La ilaha illallah. Deen is not based on just wanting to hear stories. We should want to educate ourselves, right? Anyway, so this particular hadith I want to share with you, it, it talks about this issue. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Inna min ashrati sa'a an yurfa'a al-ilm wa yakthura al-jahl. وَيَكْثُرَ الزِّنَا وَيَكْثُرَ شُرْبُ الْخَمْرِ وَيَقِلَّ الرِّجَالِ وَيَكْثُرَ النِّسَا حَتَّى يَكُونَ لِخَمْسِينَ إِمْرَأَ الْقِيُّمَ الْوَاحِدِ Translated Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He said that from amongst the signs of the day of Qiyamah is or are, the ilm will be lifted and jahalat and ignorance will become prevalent. Number one and number two. And then after that, number three, Zina will become widespread, people will consume intoxicants more and number five, there will be more women to men in ratio. Now, when we talk about ilm lifting up, there's a hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah la yaqbidu al-ilm intiza'a min al-nas, walakin yaqbidu al-ilm biqabdhi al-ulama. Right, how does ilm physically lift up from a community? How does it go? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah doesn't snatch it away from a people. Intiza'an min al-nas. Okay, one night they have knowledge and the next day they're jahil. It's not like that. Yaqbidu al-ilma biqabdi al-ulama. Those senior scholars and ulama that are prevalent in our communities, when they go, they leave a gap. Because you can't be a jack of all trades within the deen. You can't be a mufassir and muhaddith and this. Yeah, mashallah, I saw a poster once of one Jali Beed and his son and it. His son was nine years old and he had Hazrat Allama, Flana, Sheikh al Hadith, Sheikh al Tafsir, you know, Bulbul Punjab, and Patani. Long, long, long name, this long. And then Fakir, Badshah, Patani. And I'm thinking, Ya Rabbi, he's only about nine years old. My man, Bazdim, you know, the Faraiz of Wuzu, probably. I mean, he's not even, you know, so this mentality, Toba, when we hear these big titles, reality is to become a polymath in Islam is very difficult. Ghazali was classed as a polymath. What's a polymath? Harfan me Mahir. Harfan Mawla. He knows tafsir, hadith, usul, aqidah. Now you have takhassus, specialization. So you might find a sheikh who's a specialist in aqidah, someone who's a specialist in usul al-fiqh, someone who's a specialist in usul al-tafsir. Now sadly, this may come across as alien to us. Okay, what is usul? What is tafs- usul al-tafsir? That's not the remit for this bayan because it's technical. All I'm saying is just how you have a PhD in biology and then you have this, you, uh, it's focused. It's very, very particular, very focused. You can't be a jack of all trades. Similarly, when those ulama depart, they, they were known for a speciality. Certain ulama are known for a certain thing. Okay, without mentioning names, we have ulama in our amidst, in our, in our zamana now, and they're specialists at certain things. When they pass away, they will leave a gap in that particular field. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes knowledge from a people. It's not necessary that each one of us reaches the stage of becoming a scholar and an alama. It's not necessary for all of you to open the books of fiqh or hadith or aqidah and so on. Yeah, which there should be some ta'aluk with deen. But it's not necessary for you to become a scholar of deen. However, this much ilm, each and every one of us should have acquired and should be acquiring. In your 24 hour life, all the things that you're going to come across, your halal and haram, for you, you need to acquire that. You don't have to learn each and everything of fiqh. 
because there are so many masail, so many like uh, different aspects of the deen that it's just physically you can't, can't encompass. So you have the fiqh of medicine, the fiqh of tijara, the fiqh of uh, agriculture, the fiqh of, the, you know, so there's a very wide thing, okay? Point of mentioning is this much each and every one of us should learn that we, what our 24 hour life is going to come by, we need to know. So that means our salah, our fasting, hajj, zakat is an absolute must. We should know at least this much. There's a book which I really encourage brothers to get. It's called Ta'alim al Haq. It's based on the more Hanafi fiqh, which is based on hadith and the Quran and Sunnah as well. But that is more that. But if somebody wants to learn something else, then there's other books. It's just one which I personally come across. We teach it to the children in the madrasa, and it's very effective. However, there are others. We're not negating those, but we're very standing firm by the ones which we've come across as well. And what happens is the five pillars of Islam, like sort of like, uh, they start off with Tawheed, Aqeedah. So, what basic Aqeedah, then it goes on to Salah, fasting, and so on. There, when, when you see this problem arising in societies when people haven't learned, you see funny, funny things happening. For example, you know in Janazah Namaz, right? When people are standing up for Janazah, by sub Janazah, Jante or not? What happens is that now when the Imam is standing behind the Imam, there's, there, there's no Ruku. Now there's one guy of a very senior position he was, very senior. Bichara, God knows if he'd been to a janazah or not. I'm assuming it probably was the one-off. So when the Imam said, Allah, he looks around and then stood back up. He was, sorry, sorry, sorry. Look up and saying sorry as if Bichara, Allah said, I'm sorry. Forgive me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rahab, you know, Allah's not, like, subhanAllah, that's even an issue as well. I mean, even that whole, how you even apologize. But let's leave that to the side. There's another one which happened. One guy was reading a janazah and the opinion is that obviously when you make the takbir, you don't need to raise the hands. If you do raf al yadain in, in normal salah, fair enough. But it's not a must in the janazah, okay? Now, I know there's two opinions that exist. Even this whole raising hand or not. SubhanAllah, once, right? I've got two things I've got to say. One, there was one Mawlana, SubhanAllah, Allah guide him. We were sitting in a gathering and he thought it was funny to talk about how in one masjid, when the Imam Sahib went, he, he, Allah, but he started his salah and read Surah Fatiha. One brother went, I uh, mean loudly, he went, Oye! in the namaz. He went, Oye! and in Punjabi he goes, kera kutta Oye! Which dog is barking in the masjid? Is that a comment to say in the house of Allah? That means he's not a Mawlana, he's not an Alim, because you should have known the hadith where there is the Amin Bil Jahar. Do you understand? Ulama will clock, he's not a Mawlana. How could you make a comment? That means you're Jahil. Do you understand? Yeah. But for the armed public, they won't know because he looks like a Molana, he talks like one, he dresses like one, he uses a rude like one. I know these are very stereotypes, but that's how it is, right? So it's easy for the public to fall in, but if we had this much knowledge, we'd say, no, 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 hold on a second. This doesn't seem right. And these Jali Molvis then get gripped up on this. Well, that was which what happened. And this is what knowledge can create. When there's not enough knowledge, then you have these sorts of situations. Anyway, the Janazah happened. So one person's here, that, hey, one guy, he's doing rough then one side, and one guy is not. So he's thinking, Ya Rum, I'm in between. So to the guy on the right, he was doing this. Allah, just one hand. So Ya Tubi Razire, Ye Bi Razire. So you stay happy and he stays happy. One of you is right. So 50 50 at least, Jalo. 50 50. Ya Rab, you know, it's not a joke. Deen is not a mazak, you know. So you just keep this side happy, that side happy. What I'm trying to say to you is when Jahal is in a society, we don't think to check it as Muslims. I'll ask you the question. Has it ever occurred to us that in my line of work, have I learned what is required of me in Islam to learn? I, and the proof will be in your own answer. It's not for me to, for me to solicit and say, gee, what's your position, what's yours? Question yourself. Have you diligently sat with ulama and said, this is what we do, is this right? Are the gray areas now? Don't get me wrong. When I say the word ulama, some people are gonna say yes, undoubtedly, not everyone's going to agree. But I'm sure there must be someone who you trust, right? And if you don't trust anyone, study yourself then. The point is, did we bother trying? That's the question. Did we even make that justuju, that fikr, that something, something to push us, something? And this is what Rasulullah mentioned. In the and yurfa al ilm wa yakthur al jahl. Ilm will be lifted, jahl and ignorance will become widespread. It's, it's, it's everywhere, subhanAllah, absolutely everywhere. And that's why you can take advantage of people, because there's just so much ignorance. Like, subhanAllah, there was some, we have this in our community so much, Allahu Akbar. One person went around someone's house. And he was just going, ha ha ha, good hair, good hair, like here's something here, there's something here. And it was all a fraud. He was pretending that there's gin in the house. And then like he starts lighting some fire and then whew, the flames coming. Bro, we put some masala on saying lit up. You know, he's, he's doing, it's called shubdabazi. 
He's oh yeah, in simple language, una pudula na pe yar. He's taking he's 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 taking the mick out of him. But in people's eyes, he's some big big jinn baba, some taviz baba. And now I heard about a case, subhanallah, where they were going uh, and they were paying how many hundreds and hundreds of pounds in England. In England, this is happening. You think to yourself, yar. You left, you know, where did you leave from? Your, 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 your forefathers came in. You would have thought you'd been a little bit educated, but no. Because in the name of religion, we look at them, we trust because he looks religious. No, no, you can't fall for that. A per this is where Umar radiallahu anhu, Ghalib when it was Umar radiallahu anhu that said this. If not, then the moral of the story is this. Uh, if you have not done business with someone, or you have not traveled with someone, don't stand in vouch for somebody. Because you don't know what they're like. Unless you've traveled with that person, when a person travels, that's when they show their real colors. That's when you'll see if salah is important or not. That's when you'll see how do they care for their other satis or not. And when also when they're doing business, when money is involved, let's see how much iman is in that person now. That's where you see the real colors. By masjid mein mashallah har koi Abdul Qadir Jilani hai. In the masjid, everyone's pious. <laughs> right? But it's when outside you're dealing with the people, then we see the real masti masala of this person. This is why I say, right, don't be fooled by a person's hulia. Don't be fooled by a person's appearance. Anyone can look like a Molvi, right? I'll finish off on this one incident. In Blackburn, there was one brother who told us, he said once while we were sitting for Fajr namaz, Maulana Bichara didn't come because he's in San as well. So whatever happened, happened. So when the brother, they stood up, they're waiting for someone to walk in and pray the Salah. Fajr is difficult because you read long, long surahs and you can't just be going Qulu Allah had in both rakats. So they were waiting, Gibay let someone come in, he can lead the salah. One guy walks in, mashallah, he had a white juba, he had like an imama. So they said, he looks like a maulana, let's put him on the musallah. So they put him on the musallah. They said, Hazrat, you lead the salah. He goes, okay, fine. So he went, Allahu Akbar. Alam tara kayfa fa ala. And someone went, <coughs> Surah Fatiha. And he went, Ji? In the namaz. Sorry? Oh, um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alham. Can you see where I'm coming from? They looked at him and said, Mulvi sahab, maulana sahab, sheikh sahab. Stand on the musalla. Bichara, he didn't even know that. You know, he even skipped the surah fatiha. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbi. See? Well, mem, I'm not here to make fun of people. I'm saying to you, this is jahl. It's called jahl and ignorance. It will become widespread. Qiyamah is going to happen. And unfortunately, it's so widespread, where the most basic of things, like aqidah, we don't know. It seems now, whenever you say the word aqidah, people automatically label you that you're a Salafi. Bro, we, we should learn aqidah. Aqidah is the belief, tawheed and oneness of Allah. What does it entail? What is the belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is why it's a whole bayan. I wanted to just introduce that first part. It's, inshallah, we'll carry on with this another time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability. Look, what we can do is, is that the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu mentioned, he goes, Kun aliman aw mutaaliman aw mustami'an wa la rabi'an. Become a person who's a scholar yourself. This is the hadith. Become a scholar. Become a student. If you can't do that, listen to the darus of ulama and, and scholars and, and knowledgeable religious discourse. Don't become a fourth one. Don't become a fourth category, meaning where you don't have nothing to do with the first three. So let's Allah give us the tawfiq to make amal and practice on this. This is a very lengthy subject and I hope I've just touched on it. Inshallah, the way to get out of this jahl is to start ta'aleem at homes. By get fazali amal, muntakhabadi, riyadu salihin. I don't want to be labeled as a tabligi, so do whatever book you like. But start something at home. Okay, start anything. Just engage the family. By Rabbi Lawal is coming. How, why don't you use this opportunity to say, right, we're going to learn about the Prophet's life. I know our youngsters know more about David Beckham. They know more about uh, Conor McGregor. They know more about Khabib Nur Magomedov. And they know more about these people than Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They know more about Ronaldo. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I, I can ask many people here a question. The general question is when was he born? When he d born, everyone knows. But they'll say, Bara Rabi Lawal. That's not even the agreed upon date. Oh, Malana, what are you saying? Yes, it's not the agreed upon date. The agreed upon is the ninth. But Chal Bara Ed Bara, so is Bara. We'll talk about this afterwards. Point is, how much do we know about the Seerah? See, these are food for thought. Let's carry on at another time. SubhanAllah, wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma, wa bihamdi, kanashadu la ilaha illa anta nastakfiru wa tawbulu. Ah.